This is part three of the character generator in my old scope. And uh, this is going to be a quick video because I've already built it, hooked everything up, and I'm just basically testing it right now. So the added uh, component is this one here, what you see, and uh, is uh, actually, <laughs> this is pretty crude. But uh, before I tell you, I think you may ask, uh, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, what this is, is, is believe it or not, an EEPROM. And uh, as you know, if you watch my previous videos, I never buy EEPROMs because they are so expensive, some of them, and um, I can never find the one that I'm looking for. Um, and uh, I don't want to go through the trouble of um, um, building a programmer or using the computer or Arduino or nothing. I'd just rather build it. They're so easy to build anyways, and you're looking at one right here. And the other uh, reason why I build EEPROMs all the time, uh, using diodes actually, is because you can uh, you can build the EEPROM to whatever amount of bits uh, that you need. Okay, like for example, this one here has got 14 address lines and um, got 10 output lines. And the 10 outputs corresponds to the numbers 1 to 10. So in effect, what this does is is it takes the... It takes the uh, the two modules that I that I built. Actually, not the first one. The second one. The second one is the one that prints the dot matrix for displaying numbers, and it takes that and it's summed up at the um, at the uh, EEPROM card, and it outputs the number according to the diodes that I put. Now, in each row, there are five diodes. Four. The least is two. Uh, there's a few that are a couple that are four and the rest are all five dials so uh at the most to re represent numbers on a three by five grid you need at least five five uh digits and um uh to display uh alternate letters you the matrix needs to be bigger like i mentioned in the last uh video and you would need at least six uh six outputs okay to display um certain certain letters in the alphabet this can also display 13 letters out of 26 in the alphabet. Uh, I haven't added that because it, the card would have been too big. Uh, would have been bigger than it is, actually. But uh, th this one here is basically just for numbers. And I'm going to show you very quickly. My scope is on right here. It's an old scope. I've increased the, uh, I've increased the, uh, the resolution here big enough so that you guys can see the numbers. Okay. And instead of now putting these these cables into the perspective outputs of the chips, I have combined them all uh, into the uh, EEPROM card, and the EEPROM card will now give me the outputs at each, um, at each row, all right? So let me just quickly show you here. We'll start from the top. Uh, the top is uh, one. Just watch the scope there, one. Next one, two. Next one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, all right? So it works really, really good. And uh, as you can see also, I've put these uh, diodes on a piece of cardboard, <laughs> right? Because my actual, I, w I was about to print it on, on this uh, copper clad board here, but this is the only piece that I have left. I have to buy some more. So I said, well, this is just slightly smaller than what I need, so I'm going to... Uh, Build it on a cardboard. I mean, what the hell? It still works the same. Uh, anyways, um, all right. So what I've done is I've I've uh, I have basically on this ROM cards. They're very easy to make. All you got to do is make a crosshatch pattern. All right. I've got 14 lines going down, and I've got 10 lines going across. Now they don't interfere with each other because uh, you'd have to look very closely. But underneath each row that goes this way, there is a piece of cardboard underneath where the wire sits on top so it does not short out to the wires going this way all right uh and then you connect the diodes between the cables uh coming from the top here downwards against the uh rows going uh in the y direction so or the in the x direction sorry um so anyways uh that will give you the uh, the output that you just saw on the scope. All right, I'm going to do that one more time just to show you. Watch the scope. This is one, two, three, three, oops, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, or zero. Um, so now, um, the way the way this is displaying on the scope is very easy. This circuit in the back here is actually generating the x y positions, and for each position that it generates in the three by five matrix it is putting out an output on these ICs, which it gets summed up by the ROM card at the diodes, and it shows up on the, um, on the output wire right here. Okay, so what you're seeing is you're seeing these numbers being generated between uh, three different systems. Uh, one is the X uh, transmission, the Y transmission, which will give you your coordinates, and then it, the, uh, the visual indicator on the scope is due to this control. This is the z-axis input, which adjusts the brightness on the scope. All right. So uh, that's basically it, and that's this is part three. And now you see how quick uh, it displays on the scope without having to fool around with uh, you know putting wires left and right. And uh, and and basically that's it. Now, how would you use this on the scope? Well, again, now you need more uh, sawtooth generators because uh, in order to separate the uh, top portion of a display with the bottom portion of the display uh, you need that separation and the way to do that is produce a sawtooth generator that has uh, different levels and the levels on the y-axis input will give you the different heights to display different things that you want in the scope so i can literally make this scope act as a um, as, as an updated uh, oscilloscope that they sell today with you know dig uh, digital um, digital uh, information on there and uh, I get, the only problem is obviously that the circuits that I'm building are all gate level uh, systems and they are they will become extremely big all right unless I can uh, keep it more uh, uh, keep it more uh, confined to ICs that contain a lot of this separate uh, systems that I'm designing here uh, and that will reduce the size of the electronics. But if you're going to use individual gates like I'm using here, then the, unfortunately the system will get bigger and bigger. Now this EEPROM here, this is an EEPROM. This is the way to, to build these things. If you guys ever need an EEPROM for anything to store information, I suggest you build it like this. It's very simple, okay? Basically, the signals that are coming from the yellow wires here from the, from the, uh, the ICs are being converged or summed up through each diode and um, a, and a signal that comes from one wire goes through a diode out through the wire it does not go back into another line because that's the purpose of the diode the diode acts as an as an isolator it isolates one signal from another and the combined signals will show up at the output after it goes through the diodes all right so uh, that's why I build a lot of these EEPROM, diode EEPROM matrices, uh, matrix, matrixes, and I, I can't even say that word. Um, and uh, it, it works really, really well. Okay, if you, if you guys want to see some of my other videos, such as, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, you know, e the EEPROM cards that I have built for uh, my component tester, uh, I have videos on that. You guys can search my channel for that. And uh, and uh, I, I just show you how I built it, how I build them on um, on uh, printed circuit boards, and also I have one an EEPROM uh, that I actually use DIP switches to set the uh, output data that I want through switching, and uh, that's a pretty good module right there. I suggest you guys look at that one there, um, and. Um, uh, and uh, basically that's it but usually every time i need an eprom card i would i will build it like this because they're very very easy you can build this in about 10 minutes and so on and so on okay so there's nothing difficult about it uh if you guys want to check out my video i show you how to do it and you'll see how simple it is and that's it so one more time let's go through the numbers here make sure they're still active i'm just gonna hold this down because it's very light there's no weight to this at all anyways watch the scope is uh one two three four five six seven eight nine zero there you go guys 
enjoy i hope you like it don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next video now the next one i believe i'm going to try and adapt the output here with um with the output from the uh, ic pin display which is the first module here uh so i'm gonna try and get two images on the scope one on the top here for the ic pin display and then the bottom is going to indicate the values of each level all right uh using this uh system right here that i built so stay tuned for that guys but that is going to take me a while i haven't even started on that actually i just have the concept down right now it's an idea it's on paper and uh, i've yet to put it together and test it out and so i'm pretty sure i'm going to run into bugs and i'm going to have to do some a lot of uh, fine tuning on it um but aside from that, once I get it done, I will post that as well. And uh, I will also post up the diagram for you guys to see for yourself. And, uh, and if you like it, maybe you can even try it yourself or have some other uses for it. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching as usual. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Have a great night. And we'll catch you later. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.